I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about can no contact work quickly? Okay, so if you're newer to the channel and somebody's just broken up with you, uh, you're going to see a lot of videos about no contact. Mm -hmm. What is no contact? What's the purpose of it? Why are you doing it? Does it work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's all kinds of questions about it. And, you know, it's hard to know if it's working, especially right away. Right. You so have no way because you're literally not having any contact. So we're going to talk about all of these things and just kind of explore why people do no contact, what it is, and in our experience, what we've seen mm -hmm. with using it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first of all, what is no contact? Well, the way we describe no contact, it's that if somebody ends the relationship with you and says they don't want to be with you anymore, they're not willing to fix it, you stop reaching out to them, mm -hmm. okay? And it's one of the scariest things that people have to do. Yes, it is. Because everything inside you is likely telling you, reconnect. On a deep biological worse than level. That, I was going to say even worse than that. Some of the hormones are designed to give you the energy to go replace the loss and go find that person again. That's so right. It makes it doubly difficult. Your body is experiencing all kinds of chemical reactions. Chemicals are released in your brain and everything inside you to your core is get them back. And there's like this annihilation fear going on there, Almost, right? Almost, yeah. Like, if I don't get this person back, I don't know if I'll still be here. Yeah. That's like, a very scary kind of feeling. Yeah, like, it, you know, if you're a child and you lose your parent in the store. Yep. That kind of terror. Yep. That's a lot of the terror you're probably experiencing. Yep. At the very idea of not reaching out to that person. And you'll see conflicting advice on the internet about, we'll do a handwritten letter or do a clean slate message or a good reminder text. And the re or an accountable an accountability letter. Yep. But the reality is those things are less effective than not reaching out to somebody. Okay? And we see this time and time again. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, I've done the handwritten letter, I did the good reminder text. Now, occasionally those do, things do work, but you know, a, a broken clock is right twice a day. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> I can't say that it doesn't work all the time, but I can tell you there was one year that I kept track of the handwritten letters and the outcomes, <laughs> and almost every single answer was they just got ignored and no one replied to it. So, we know that the information is out there. It's just that it's not as effective as making that person experience separation anxiety for themselves. Now, separation anxiety is a major issue in this scenario, right? Absolutely. Let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. So, we are wired to connect yep. to another person. And this is a, from when we're infants and children. Mm -hmm. We're wired. Don't toddle too far off from your parents, you could die, yep. right? Which in, you know, if you think about evolution, which in the old days was absolutely true. If you, if you, you know, somehow lost track of your mother, you could end up lunch for the saber-toothed tiger. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're a little child and you wander off from your parents, you, you don't usually go too far, right? And if any extended amount of time goes on there, the parent's going to look for the child or the child's going to look for the parent, mm -hmm. right? Because they don't like the separation anxiety, which is kind of tied with what we're trying to say here on does no contact work quickly? We're going to get to that, right? Because 
as a parent, I could tell you, if your kid is quiet for any short amount of time, you're going to be like, all right, they might be getting into something. Yeah, are they okay? What are they doing? Can I'd they rather be than be making noise where yeah. I know what's going on than when they're quiet and they could yeah. be doing anything. Yeah. Right? So you start to feel that distance. You start to wonder. You worry about the child and you think, okay, I got to go check on them. Right? Well, it mirrors romantic relationships, mm -hmm. which we don't really understand. But Margaret, there's so much correlation between our relationship with our caregivers and our partner. Oh, every day in every way. And I think we become more and more aware of that. Um, but people will say, well, so-and-so was so cold when they broke up with me, I don't think they have separation anxiety. Well, here's the good news. There's no way around it. If they've been with you, if they've been intimate with you, if you've had, you know, good emotional support for each other, they cannot bypass separation anxiety. So as much as you're terrified that they'll never think about you again or that they won't miss you, you don't have to worry. There's no way around it. Now, if they started dating somebody else right away, they often use that person like a safety net. Right. But those rebound relationships rarely last. Now, of course, they do last sometimes. I'm but sure. Really. Yeah. But in our experience, most of the time, we hear about those rebound relationships not lasting more than, you know. And we hear people in a, in a despairing state. They've heard <clears throat> from various other people that they know in common that this person is now seeing somebody else and they're sure that your ex is going to go down the primrose path with this person. Chances are no, particularly if they're avoidant. Yeah. And I know I've been there. I remember with you, Mara, having many discussions yeah. thinking that the Applebee's girl was going to run right. off into the sunset right. with this guy. Yeah. It didn't happen. No. And in most cases, it doesn't happen. Right. Okay. So you got to understand, keep your focus on the personal growth and the development in no contact. Many of you are spending way too much time obsessed about what is going on with your ex currently, where they're at and what they're doing. For the most part, it's a waste of time. Okay, you want to plan and act as if at some point they're going to come back. Because if you spend all your time going to see when they're logging on to Facebook, when they're posting, who they're posting with, obsessing about all those stories, it just keeps you from the true work you can be doing on yourself that you really want to do to show them that you truly have changed. Mm -hmm. And I know, Margaret, so many people get stuck with their ex's current interest level and their motivation level mm -hmm. being tied together. Yep. And so... When people think, oh, my ex is being cold, they're happy right now with this new person, they're never going to come back, they kind of give up on the personal growth. Right. And, you know, personal growth is a, is a difficult issue. Ideally, we do it for ourselves. But if the only place you can start to take good care of yourself and look at growth is for your partner, then we'll start there. Absolutely. Okay? Yeah. And what we hear is, how are they going to know all the good things I'm doing? They're not right now, but maybe later. <clears throat> yeah, ideally, when you're in front of them again, those things will come out naturally right. and they'll see it for themselves. Right. You know, Margaret, I saw recently somebody who is really active on the channel, maybe a year or two ago, mm -hmm. and they would comment on all the videos. And I think they did a coaching with us. Um, maybe an email or Skype, it's been a while, yeah. but I know who it is. And she said recently on, a, on one of the videos, I stopped doing the work. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it. My ex reached out after over a year and mm -hmm. she felt stupid about it. And she's kind of beating herself up because yep. now she's thinking I had all this time to prepare and now I don't feel ready. Right. But you deserve it. Whether or not, you know, you, like I say, if the only place you can start is for the sake of your partner, then start there. But ultimately, you deserve to grow and change. Absolutely. Yeah. So, for many of you that are new to the channel, you're thinking, I I'm so confused about this no contact. One coach says this, one coach says that. We understand, okay? 
Um, all we can tell you is that Margaret and I and Coach Victoria are all professionals and have been interested in what we do for a long time. And Margaret and I were studying this stuff and talking about it for years. Absolutely. Before years. we even yeah. started the channel. Yeah. Okay. And we're telling you what we find to be the most effective is just stop reaching out. Allow them to come to you. Allow them to miss you and to process things. And Margaret, that's such a big thing that people get stuck on. Process. Process. I want you to tell me to do X so that I can get Y. Mm -hmm. Quickly. Now. Quickly. Because I'm very anxious. Yes. Okay. We can't deliver quickly. Okay. But we can deliver accurately. And then we hear, I, I want to fight. I want to fight to get my partner back. Well, you can't fight alone. If your partner doesn't want to come back, or until they want to come back, there isn't very much you can do. You can't manipulate them. You can't coax them. Those things usually don't work. So what do we count on? We, there's a dynamic that we count on, and that's separation anxiety, yes. right? Yes, absolutely. And if you don't believe us, think about your separation anxiety level and how much it is influenced with how much you want them back. Well, when they made the decision to break up with you, they weren't experiencing that because you're telling them, let's fix it, I want to repair it. So why would they feel anxiety over losing you when you're making it clear that you're wanting to repair it? Okay, so in this, can no contact work quickly? In a sense, yes. Mm -hmm. And here's what I mean. Once the dynamic shifts from you reaching out, constantly bombarding them, constantly um, trying to get them to do what you want and manipulate them or coerce them or whatever it is that you're trying to do, they will sense it, okay? It feels different for them. Now, at first, they're going to be excited and happy and just relieved. Relieved. Yeah, that's important to understand. Most people don't break up because they really want to. There's some other dynamic going on there. So yeah, they're going to be relieved in the beginning. And I know that it really hurts to hear that because that's like the worst injury is like, they're relieved not to talk to me. I thought what we had was so important. Right. It's just what happens in a breakup. So there, the sooner you stop reaching out, the quicker they can start to go through the experience of uh, the stages that they'll experience like relief and you know the elation and, and then free at last free at last yeah. elation right and then get to separation anxiety okay but that comes with time and the sooner you stop reaching out the quicker they can experience a shift in the dynamic where you're no longer basically begging to be in somebody's life and they're just like leave me alone, they're cold, they're mean, they're hurtful. It just completely changes the whole situation when you say, okay, it's not what I want, but I'm not going to chase you. Yeah, you don't have to say this, but with your actions, you stop chasing them, you leave yeah. them alone, and you allow them to experience the loss of you. And we're counting on the separation anxiety here that they will, no matter how cold they looked, miss you. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we see time and time again is no, in the beginning, they don't miss you. I know it's hard to hear, and they miss you somewhat. Yes, they do. But when they're so stuck in that relief stage, they're not really missing you yet. They're more like, okay. Okay, I'm out having a good time now. I don't have to, he, he, they're not gonna keep calling me or texting me. And they're just happy that you're not pressuring them anymore. Yep. It's relieving that pressure that you've been putting on them. And so taking that pressure off the table actually makes a big difference in turning a situation around. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to pressure somebody. No, it won't get you anywhere. No, it won't. And if you don't believe me, look at the comments and share your experiences. So if you are deciding about, you know, going no contact. We have tons of videos that cover the topic extensively. 
We just want you to understand that yes, when you stop reaching out and you go no contact or no reach out, it can quickly shift the dynamics of a situation that somebody's feeling pressured, stressed, annoyed, irritated, aggravated to, huh, okay. Maybe they've moved on. Maybe they're going to forget about me. And that's where they slowly get to. And that's what we want. Exactly. And any contact you have stops the process. Any contact of you reaching out. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Like if you have a con if you manage to get a contact, that's going to stop their process of missing you. And that's not in your best interest, right? Yeah, absolutely. You want them to sit with missing you with being anxious about the loss and keep you in mind, all right? It's so important that you stay focused on more than just no contact videos. You gotta really grow. You gotta really reflect on the relationship and think about what happened, why you got to a breakup. What are the things that were going on in the relationship? And when you can figure those things out, and I know it's hard because you get so overwhelmed with anxiety, right. Um, it helps you to get to a better place to really show them you have changed, not telling them, I've changed after three weeks. I had somebody ask me this week, do you think I can tell her I've changed after 19 days? You can tell her, <laughs> but she's going to know She's better. not going to buy it. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I believe you have the best intentions and I, I understand that you're going to work on it, but no. Yeah, you're kidding yourself. Yeah. And if you do have a contact with her that you don't initiate, we hope, telling her you're in process is just fine. Ideally, I'd rather it come out naturally yeah. than trying to sell yourself right. like a, a used car salesman would. Right. I'd much rather it came out naturally, but everybody tries to rush those things because yeah. they're anxious. One of the things I was just saying to Craig, and I'm certainly open to other comments on this, it seems to me that it's harder for men to do the no contact. And I hear men say to me all the time, but I want to do something. Well, going no contact is just, it's not to do nothing. It's a strategic plan to let, to let your partner sit with their anxiety and the fact that they miss you. It's not to do nothing, even though it feels that way. Where you want to put your energy and make you feel like you're doing something is in working on yourself. Yep, you can look at... Because that's within your control. Absolutely. Uh, we have over a thousand videos that you can watch for free. We have the workbooks. We have the creative healing course. You can get into therapy. You can do coaching with us. Yes. This is what we've been, you know studying and trying to figure out work through for years and you know we're, we're happy to work with you and talk to you about your situation i was going to margaret two times a week yes when i was going through my breakup you had a terrible time and i would be there sometimes for hours before she'd throw me out which i eventually would have to do yeah but then i'd be back a couple days later yep. but you did live through it <laughs> i did and we use that to really learn and figure this stuff out over the years. Yes, and we were both learning from all that. Yeah. So we know how hard it is to go through it. And, and, and let me also add, your history of loss in your life also has an impact here. Yeah. Um, most people who call us are old enough to have lost a grandparent or God forbid, anybody closer than that when they were growing up. Most people have had several losses in their lives. And that, whenever a loss comes up, it brings back the other ones. And that makes you double frantic, trying to find some relief from the anxiety. Absolutely. Yeah. I always recommend hug your dog, pat your cat. Yep. That's emergency aid, <laughs> right? It helps. Yep. So hopefully this is giving you a better understanding of what no contact is, why we suggest doing it, why we find it more effective than the other strategies out there as far as like any kind of reach out or, uh, you know, manipulative behavior like a grand gesture or a handwritten letter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and gives you some insight into what you need to be doing during no contact besides watching no contact videos. Yeah. We cover all kinds of topics 
and we are constantly looking for new areas to share with you and to help you guys grow. One of the other things you can think about is that for you, whoever the abandoned party is, um, you both have as much right to walk away from a relationship that isn't working for you as anybody else does. And if you walked out of the relationship, you wouldn't want to be, you know, chased or, or followed. Maybe it would feel a little good once in a while, but mm -hmm. overall it won't help. Yep. Okay? Yep. Um, so, hopefully this helps you understand that no contact can work quickly in the sense that it shifts the dynamic right away. Doesn't mean that they're going to reach out to you right away, because that rarely happens. Occasionally it does. But it gives a dynamic shift and a and the power imbalance that's been going on right. kind of evens out a bit. Okay, and of course we are here for coaching and if you can get my coaching at my website askcraig.net, I do email coaching, I do Skype, and of course Margaret is available for Skype coaching. If you think I can be helpful, please sign up. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, go to AskCraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.